Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire and hopefully explain the rather strange rare weapon the Zeta Gun. Now there are several different ways to acquire the Zeta Gun, but to get the ball rolling we will need to find Edward Deegan. Deegan can be found in various locations so you might have to check them all. These include Bunker Hill, the third rail in Good Neighbor, or the Dugout Inn in Diamond City. So if you can't find him be sure to keep cycling between the three locations until you do run into Edward Deegan. And once you do, he will come up and have a chat. During his chat, he will offer you work. You most certainly want to take that work. And this will begin the quest Special Delivery. We then need to head to Cabot House, which can be found to the northeast of Diamond City. And in here, we need to speak to Jack Cabot, Edward Deegan's boss. Now, after speaking to Jack, he will send you on your way to keep doing missions for him. And this is something you want to do. However, before you leave the house for the first time, if you go up to the second floor and to the back of the house into Jack Cabot's laboratory, on the table you can actually find a Zeta gun. It's sitting right there, ripe for the taking. However, if you decide to take the Zeta gun at this stage in the quest, it will be counted as stealing. But nonetheless, that is one way to acquire it. Now to move on, like I said earlier, you want to keep doing the quests for Jack Cabot. Eventually, you will be on the quest The Secret of Cabot House. And at the last stage of this quest, kill or free Lorenzo Cabot. At this stage in the quest, specifically to get the Zeta gun, you will have to side with Lorenzo and free him. In turn, you will have to kill Jack Cabot and on Jack's body will be found the Zeta gun. However, I do not suggest doing this as you can side with Jack and get Lorenzo's artifact and then still pick up the Zeta gun off the table so you can get both when siding with Jack, which I also think is the morally correct choice. So although you can get the Zeta gun from killing Jack, I wouldn't suggest doing it. And finally, after finishing the quest, you can still pick up the Zeta gun from the table and if you do take it every three weeks of in-game time, it will respawn spawn on the table and this time it won't count as stealing. So that's the three ways you can get the Zeta gun. I would definitely opt for the last method because that way you can save Jack and get Lorenzo's artifact, in turn helping the good guys and getting two unique weapons. And as always before more to get out and looking at the weapon space stats I have reduced all my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. So first of all something that should be explained is the Zeta wave barrel is actually a modification. As soon as you take it off, it just turns into a standard Gamma Gun. This is quite special because it means you can go and find a Gamma Gun with a very interesting legendary prefix and then attach the Zeta Wave Barrel to it, potentially resulting in some very fun and powerful weapons. So of course, as this is a Zeta Gun weapon guide, we're going to be going with the Zeta Wave Barrel, which turns the projectiles into Zeta Wave projectiles. The minus 100 radiation damage is just taking that off from the standard barrel. It doesn't mean that hitting your enemies reduces their rads by 100. Five times minimum range, nine times maximum range, and minus 10% to VAT's cost. In the second mod slot, we're going to be going with the Sharpshooter's Grip. This reduces spread by 15%, reduces recoil by 15%, reduces VAT's cost by 15%, and increases bash damage by 50%. And finally, we're going to be going with the Electric Signal Carrier Antenna. Hold fire to charge up to plus 40 energy damage and plus 30% to VAT's cost. Now, given the Zeta Wave Barrel has such strange properties, Properties, this additional energy damage is most welcome. And finally, once it has been modded out the way I just did, we will end up with a Sharpshooter Zeta Gun, which has a base energy damage of 40. It has a base Zeta radiation damage of 10. We'll talk more on that later. It uses the Gamma Rounds as ammunition. It has a fire rate of 66. Its range is 119. Its accuracy is 73. Its weight is 3.6 pounds, and its value is 220 caps. And as we can see up the top, Sharpshooter Zeta Gun, no legendary prefixes. That's because, of course, the unique element of this weapon is a modification and not the weapon itself. Okay, so the Zeta gun. As we know, it now shoots Zeta projectiles, doing specific Zeta radiation damage, which is apparently harmless to normal people. And although the radiational effect might be harmless, this does actually translate to damage on normal people. Now,
Now, although if you read forums or anything like this, the Zeta Gun is considered one of the worst weapons in the entire game, when in fact, it's really not. Not only is it quite interesting, it's actually pretty good, especially now that we've put the electric signal carrier antenna on it, adding that extra 40 energy base damage. So it's got a base Zeta radiation damage of 10, which translates to normal damage. It then has a hidden effect, which is an area of effect blast that each bullet does, which has a base Zeta radiation damage of 11.5. It then has another hidden special ability, which stuns enemies upon a hit and also has a chance to send them flying. So now we have the Cricket Gun from Men in Black, which does 10 Zeta damage, 11.5 Zeta damage explosion, and then 40 energy damage. So then, after I got all of the appropriate damage increasing perks for the Zeta Gun, its energy damage went up to 115, its straight up Zeta damage went to 57, and its explosive Zeta damage went up to 66. So combine all of those together, and we end up with 238 damage with each hit, which isn't that bad. Given it's a semi-automatic pistol, you can fire those bullets off quite quickly, and each bullet has a chance to stun the enemies, and that effect is carried across into the explosion so you can stun a group of people with one bullet. Then it's also got the chance to send them flying, so this gun sure is Zeta than we may have first thought. And on top of all that, the damage is split almost half and half with energy damage and a type of radiation damage. So although the Zeta radiation translates directly to damage, it is counted as a radiation damage, so your enemy will need radiation resistance and energy resistance to resist this gun. So if that has now gotten you a little bit excited, and it's not just the radiation, then don't forget what I said earlier, that this is just added by a modification. You can apply it to your favorite legendary gamma gun, making an even more powerful and special Zeta gun. Exactly what the Zetans would have wanted. And in case you were wondering, the name Zeta comes from the alien species in the Fallout universe, as is made quite apparent in the Fallout 3 Mothership Zeta DLC. And this is supported even further when Jack Cabot asks the player if they believe in aliens at the start of the quest special delivery. He also talks about his father digging up artifacts in ancient ruins that were not made by, nor were they made for humans. So at the end of the day, I think you will agree with me that the Zeta gun is actually pretty good and it's pretty interesting. So hopefully people stop beating on it and give it some space. After all, love is a universal language. So hopefully you're taking away from this that this gun isn't just extra good, it's extraterrestrial. And if you would like to support the channel, be sure to go to Patreon. Just joking, I bet you thought this whole video was just a Zeta. And here it is, the Zeta gun in action. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the rare weapon, the Zeta Gun. I do hope that this video helped you out in some way and hopefully explained away some of the rubbish myths about this weapon. But if it did help you, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 Guides that I upload. If you believe in aliens, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link will also be found in the description. And with all that said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second. Beam me up, Scotty. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second. Beam me up, Scotty.